What did the National Math Panel report say about decimals and fractions and percentages for that matter? <laughs> well, uh, the panel report said a lot about, about fractions. If there's any singular content message, I think, in the mathematics that, that leads to algebra, it's we need to do a more thorough, complete job with fractions. And we went out of our way to define fractions as more than A over B, three-fourth kinds of representation of fractions. We went out of our way to say, similar to what Denise uh, Mewborn just said about the ability to connect fractions with decimals as just frankly another way to talk about fractions and related percents and how that leads and builds to work with ratio and proportion. And, and those are huge, huge building blocks. Beginning early in elementary school, certainly extending in the middle grades of, of elementary, three, four, five, and then uh, at the middle school, junior high school level around this country. And what, what was so interesting in our work, Abner, as this kind of spun out, remember we worked for two years, is that fractions were like popping up all over. Um, I chaired the content committee and, and, and Wu and, 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 and I and, and others who worked in, in that uh, area, Wilford Schmidt, Sandra Stutsky, uh, Larry Faulkner, uh, certainly recognized that fractions content-wise are important in, in the broader definition that I just made. But here are those people who were learning, who were working in the learning part of the report, looking at research about, you know, developmental needs and awareness of fractions, found some issues. Um, in working with assessment, and I was part of that task group as well uh, that Camilla Benbow chaired, Tom Loveless and I in particular worked hard at looking at the National Assessment of Educational Progress. And I, and I think, frankly, the NAEP could do a better job of, of, if you will, making fractions pop as part of that assessment at, at the grade four and grade eight level. And we made some recommendations to, to actually do that to give more prominence to, to uh, that area of, of the curriculum, at least title-wise, to give it more attention. Uh, we saw similar kinds of concerns with a subset of the state test that we looked at in, in more or less a case study of, of six of, of the state assessments. Um, but the other thing that was really interesting, and again, not surprising for anybody who's been in the classroom, as a part of, 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 of an opportunity to get, if you will, the classroom teacher voice uh, in the panel work, we surveyed, not we uh, individually, but Newark out of the University of Chicago uh, using a survey that many of us worked to develop, um, myself included, um, asked those teaching introductory algebra a question along the lines of, what mathematics would you like your students to know well or better than you're currently seeing? And uh, of course, uh, the ability to solve problems uh, popped up there as any teacher of mathematics would expect. But right under, under that came fractions. So here you have fractions coming from, from a survey of over 700 teachers, I might add. This is not a trivial, trivial number. From uh, the, the people who are looking at research and learning, from the people who are, who are working uh, in, in, in the area of content. And then we had an instructional materials subgroup who, who didn't look as directly at the content, but they too were, were seeing this to some extent in their work. So this was all over the place. When, when we actually released uh, the report in March of this year, uh, we all had an opportunity to say a few words about this. And, uh, you know, I, uh, just as kind of a tongue-in-cheek, tongue I remembered the movie uh, The Graduate and Dustin Hoffman, and he's getting this, you know, kind of a quiet conversation, you know, Charlie, it's about plastics. And I was saying, you know what, guys? It's about fractions. <laughs> we really need to do a better job. Is this, is this like the lost element of the curriculum? I don't think so. Um, but in, in terms of an area of emphasis, uh, particularly in those upper level grades of elementary school and on into the middle junior high school levels, absolute linchpins to higher level mathematics. Mm -hmm. And that, that fluidity between sort of, as Denise said, right, sure. um, yeah. A bar yeah. Yeah. B, as well as point yeah. whatever it is, sure. whatever it might yeah. be, and percentages. So. And, and, it, and, and her comments relative to other cultures is so true, having, having seen that myself. I mean, the, uh, we're, we're living, I believe, in, in a decimal culture, and yet 
those are grounded by our work in fractions. Mm -hmm. So I, I want students to be able to know that three-fourths and 75 percent and, and 75 hundredths are different ways to say the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I want them to be comfortable with seeing that, if you will, on the number line or thinking about it as, as, as three-quarters of an hour or lots of other ways that, that this would, would occur in, in our lives. Mm -hmm. so, great, yeah. great. Sure. Thanks, Skip. Sure. Karen, decimals, fractions, again, how does the county um, work on th that that subject area again, as as Denise and Patty talked about. How what's Montgomery County doing related to that kind of teaching? What we found, Adner, was that through our research, it was better for us to link fa fractions and decimals more directly than they are in a lot of the resources that we encountered. So we took the same models that we use for addition and subtraction with linking the two together, and multiplication and division in linking those together also and teach them as something that is taught together. So there is work with fractions and then complementary work with decimals and students can see the relationship and as Patty explained perfectly, money has often been the transition piece, the link between them because children talk about quarters and they recognize that there are four quarters in one dollar. So you can name that as one fourth and then you can talk about 0.25 or 25 hundredths. Yeah and that's we had talked about this before, but that's my, you know, my second grader, right, is, mm -hmm. is looking at money now and, and just gaining some understanding of it, at least as part of, uh, as part of school. And I'm assuming that will build, uh, build further into a, a more, a deeper understanding about, about decimals and fractions. As he gets into third grade, he'll realize that this money that he's, money notation that he's been working with when he goes from the cent sign to the decimal point and dollar sign that, oh, that decimal point is, can be a fraction, a decimal representation in and of itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the practice that students get working interchangeably with different measurement systems, whether it is measuring volume or length or, or weight, to see that, yes, I can measure it as a fractional part, and I can also measure it as a decimal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Bertram? In, in the school building? And, and the, How about decimals and, decimals and fractions? Well, at the K-2 level, students are still developing the, the concept of fraction, mm -hmm. the fraction concepts. Um, and as they move through the grade levels up to a grade, the third, third to fifth grade level, uh, the ideas of connecting both and seeing the relationship between a decimal and a fraction is, is crucial. Um, there, and there are some models where, where students have been developing the idea, okay, and at this level I can see what one is divided into four equal parts, into eight equal parts, and further, well there's ten equal parts in this particular model that we call a decimal. Uh, base ten models uh, are very, very useful for, for that representation. Um, digit blocks is another representation, and students can move uh, fluently between the varied representations to see at this level, okay, this is a ten equal parts, that can further be divided into 10 equal parts, and this model can be, so the, the relationship between decimal and fractions, fractions is, is, is a unique one, and, and that's the basis for, for the decimal, decimal concepts. Thanks, Bertram. I want to come back to that K2 uh, question related to, to fractions, but I first want to take a moment to report on the results of our second polling question, where we asked, in your school or district, what area related to fractions seems to be the hardest for your students and for your teaching staff, potentially? 17% said the relationship between fractions, decimals, and percentages. 7% that a fraction is a number. 9% facility with improper and mixed fractions. 49% of you said deep conceptual knowledge of fractions. There's our winner, I think. 7% facility, even creativity with problem solving. 9% facility between different representations, and lastly, 2% uh, from uh, said other. Um, I think we have time for uh, one or two more questions, and I want to pick up, Bertram, on what you said related to K2, because someone from Central South Carolina wrote in and said, what can K2 teachers do to help lay the foundation for working with fraction in, in grades three through five? Can you start that? Well, it's interesting that 49% of, of the respondents said that deep conceptual knowledge of fractions is, is one of the big, biggest areas because it begins at kindergarten, kindergarten, second grade level. Um, 
students need to use the, the, the model, different models, a variety of models. And I think that's a crucial uh, piece of understanding fractions at the early, early grade levels. Um, circ areas, the area model, using circles, squares, triangles, and finding many different ways mm -hmm. to, to, to represent fractions. 